I just met the most pompous ass on the trail. About a half mile back, there's a scenic ridge, and I walked past and just stopped there to have a look around, and there was a photographer there all set up, and I like photography. It's one of my hobbies, so naturally, I gravitated towards towards him, you know, to say hello, see what, what it was he was shooting. And I noticed right away he had a very expensive um, gear layout. He had a, I don't know, a, probably a thousand dollar tripod, four thousand dollar camera. Um, my suspicions were confirmed later on when he began to tell me the cost of all of his items. And let me tell you, he probably had, I don't know, uh, the, the aggregate amount of uh, the worth of his photography gear was probably almost as much as my Jeep. But, you know, I'm kind of a gearhead. As I said, I, I like photography. So I got to talking with him and right away I could tell that part of the reason he was set up there was to take a photo, but the other part was to kind of ensnare anyone who would happen to walk by like a like a spider sitting in the midst of his web. And well he latched on to me and you know, you know how they say the uh, conversational ball should be like a game of tennis hitting it back and forth. Well he engaged in a very long game of golf. But anyway, I deal with people like that regularly and um, it was no real hardship to talk to him until I took my camera out so I could take a picture of the view from the ridge. And that's when, that's when things took kind of a turn. When he saw my camera, he said, what are you going to do with that? I said, well, I'm going to take a picture. He said, no, nah, no. Nah. If you want to take a picture that's really worth taking, you have to have a full frame camera. The sensor on your camera is too small. You're not going to get a decent image. Well, from that point on, he just proceeded to tell me everything that was wrong with my gear and everything that I was doing wrong or doing badly. Now here's the thing. I've been taking pictures really since I got my first 35 millimeter film camera at the age of 11. And uh, yeah, I'm sure I do a lot of things wrong in hiking, in photography, and all of my other hobbies. But I get some results which are are pleasing to me. And I know, I, I'm the first to admit, I maybe break a few rules or do things badly. For example, when I take a picture, I almost never take a black and white picture. Because, I don't know, I grew up watching black and white TV, I read black and white print media. When, when color TVs, became more affordable and we got our first one, I never looked back. Um, when I look at historical photos that have been colorized, I enjoy looking at those more than I do the originals. Um, when I take a photo, I never shoot in portrait mode. I don't know. My eyes are on a horizontal plane. That's how I see the world. I don't see the world this way. And I don't like to have black bars on either side of my pictures. So I never shoot portrait mode. Um, I don't do much editing after I've taken the photo. I try to get as much as I can done in, in the camera so I don't have to bother with Lightroom or Photoshop or any of these things. I, I like to be able to just move on. So yeah, I do things badly sometimes. Um, but you know what? G.K. Chesterton said 
that if something's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. Uh, what does that mean? I don't know, if, uh, if you want to write a love letter, really it's not important to wait until you have a PhD in English before you sit down and put pen to paper. I don't think the person... He has to fly by over here, doesn't he know I'm making a video? I don't think the person on the receiving end of a love letter is going to be bothered too much if you use an M dash instead of an N dash or you have a misplaced semicolon or you even spell the word love wrong. I don't think I don't think they're going to be bothered by that. And if they are, then maybe you shouldn't be writing that person love letters. I don't know. Uh, if uh, if you were to be able to ask a a newborn baby, you know, if they, they were able to comprehend the question and give an answer, who would you rather be raised by? Your mother, who is going to make tons of mistakes because she's an amateur. She's never done it before. She's going to do things badly. She's going to raise you, she's, you know, the best that she can, but, you know, she's going to love you, but, you know, she's going to make mistakes. Would you rather be raised by her? Or would you rather be raised by a group of PhDs, you know, in uh, early childhood education who are going to take turns, you know, subjecting you to the latest educational theories or child-rearing theories? And uh, I think any child would say, I want to be raised by my mother. You know, mistakes and all. I'm, I'm willing to take that risk. So, yeah, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. You know, there's an expression, hike your own hike. You know, don't don't worry about what other people are doing, what other hikers, you know, what equipment they may have with them. You don't always need a $4,000 camera. You don't always need a set of $300 trekking poles. You just have to have the desire to do something and you have to be able to risk doing something badly. And not be bothered by what other people have to say about it. So yeah, I had no intention of making a video today, but today was all about putting some miles under my belt, but sometimes these chance encounters just get your creative juices flowing and the camera has to come out and things have to be said but I feel better now thanks for letting me vent um, hope uh, you guys are able to get out and enjoy yourselves no matter what your interests are and be mindful of the human spiders who are always out there willing to disparage your efforts, but don't pay them any mind. Hike your own hike. Thanks for uh, stopping by. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.